What's up, everyone? You guys know me, right? The panda. Panda photographer. In the last few days, I have not been posting any content about this. The IRX 11 F4 wide-angle lens. I had an electric scooter accident. I fell off. I hit a little bump. My T bar went to the right. I flipped, hit my head, damaged my jacket, caught some holes in my jacket, hit my elbow, and damaged my hip tissue. So, I've been trying to recover as fast as possible, but I am going to be making a video about the IRIX 11 F4 in this video because I wanted to emphasize a few things that I noticed when shooting with really extreme wide angle lenses. Now, especially with the IRIX lens, very, very built like a tank. Quality is great. Now, this is the Firefly edition, keep in mind, but it's still weather sealed. Now, keep in mind, ND filters for this will be troublesome, but will be expensive. So, I have software for my uh, images, so I can always apply ND filter. But then again, the best results are when you apply ND filter on location when you need to add it for certain particular shots. Now, with that said, please do subscribe, do like, do share the content. Because on this channel, I teach photography, I educate, I even give st some direction to those that are looking for directions and a bunch of other tech related uh, topics in the community. Uh, as a photographer and as a self-taught photographer, uh, this is what we do on this channel. So keep that in mind. If you guys want to support financially and keep the lights on here, I do have a PayPal donation link that you guys can go ahead with no account needed to actually uh, send a donation. You can send any amount you want to help keep the lights on here. So, but with that said, I want to talk about the IRIX uh, 11 because this is a pretty damn good lens. And uh, even if you have a Sony, Canon, Pentax, Fuji, I don't care. Uh, this is pretty damn good. This is a Firefly Edition, right? Weather seal, the focus ring is pretty damn smooth and accurate. As I said in my unboxing, keep in mind with this lens, this lens has a hard stop at affinity, which gives you a sense even if you're in dark situations, you can detect when the infinity is actually lined up or when you are focusing infinity in pinch black doing actual photography. So, but with that said, we are still in Portland. I'm still waiting to get into Canada, but it doesn't look like anytime soon. But we still in Portland. I wanted to take the lens out and I didn't have an ND filter. Keep that in mind. But I did have my ability to use apertures. Now, keep in mind with these wide angle lenses, diffraction starts to kick in at f10, f11, so be aware. But with the IRIX, I didn't see much. I'm going to show you that in a second. But this was shot at f9. Shutter speed is 250. Shutter speed, I mean, ISO is at 100. Now, as you can see, it's pretty damn sharp. Shop all the way through. There's some flare, some flare in there. But like I said, didn't use any any ND filters for this whatsoever. All right, and you can see the sun flare. Try to get the sun flare to give me a little starburst, but with that harsh, was it noon during the day? Yeah, it's really difficult without an ND filter. But I tried, so that's what counts. But let me show you. A few things with this now if we were to actually uh, turn off the levels because I realized that I wasn't even level because it felt like it was tipping to the right you can see that it tipped to the right because I wasn't level properly the reason why I'm bringing this up is because when you use the wide angle lenses if you get your levels correct you do not have to with this lens particularly but you could try this with other lenses. But with this lens particularly, there's minimum distortion that needs to be fixed. As you can see, minimum distortion that needs to be fixed. 
So just wanted to emphasize that and show you guys what I was talking about. Here is another image edited in Lightroom in the Nick collection. Keep that in mind. As I said, during the day, early lunch hour, 12 noon, f5.6, shutter speed is 125th of the second, f uh, uh, ISO 100 at 11 mil. All right. I didn't do much because of this reason. Now, if I was to press the transformation and go to auto, it would kind of like cut off a piece of the of the building on top. Let me explain and demonstrate this from the, the original file size, which is Canon. You should know the Canon 80D, which is a crop sensor. So keep that in mind. All right. So when I do that, as you can see, you just saw it, right? Pay attention to the top of the frame and the bottom. It cuts off his feet and it cuts off the top of the building. Let's do it again. I didn't like that. I just thought that it looks kind of perfect this way, but that also tells me I wasn't level. So if I was level and I would have got this shot, which is telling me now I'm level, which it is telling me it's level, I would have performed this a little bit better. But I also was shooting this hen hill, so keep that in mind. So a lot to tell you guys. There's a lot to tell you guys, I know. For instance, same thing with this building. The levels was off because I was tilted to the right, but in I wasn't actually looking through the optical wheel find, finder through the camera. I was actually using the LCD screen and holding the camera, getting low, which is my recommendation. If you're going to capture big buildings close up, but you want minimum distortion, try to level them as perfectly as possible or use a tripod, but bring a small one with you. A small one, not a big one, because then people think you're doing professional work. And I know some buildings in certain cities do have, you know, uh, property security that you cannot commercialize or shoot. So keep that in mind. Bring a small one so it's easier to put on it, easy to grasp, and take the shot that you need. But with this one, I had to do the exact same thing. And but I also wanted to show you some of these other images that I have taken also with the Irix 11. And uh, hopefully the photo will show up this time. No, it did not. I have to show you a folder. It was on June 1st. So here are some of these images that I wanted to show you that I am going to add. But I, I, I kind of wanted you guys to see the point of why 11 mil fits everything in the frame. And as you can see, I was pretty low to the ground. And I like getting low to the ground with wide angle lenses because it, it kind of brings a lot of character to the image, but it also brings a lot of depth. And, and what I mean by the depth part is that like everything that's in focus in the frame, and if you take a really good uh, composition shot, you can, you, can, you can pretty much surprise a lot of people. In this one, I'm going to do something a little, little tricky with it, but I like how the sun was high in the sky. And there's a little starburst going on there, but let's see if we re let's see if we can recover this particular image. But I also want to show you other ones as well. I want to show you how the tunnel effect works within the Irix 11. This tunnel effect that is working, I like it. I like when things are covering covering in a subject that's coming towards the way, like this train. Uh, and as you can see. Um, there's really no purple fringing, uh, maybe slight ghosting, but I do love the color edition. I love these greens. I like how these greens are popping out. Uh, these were hand, sh hand shot, by the way, guys, not shot on a tripod. Uh, one of these are sharper than another. I believe it's this one. Yeah, I believe it's this one. Yeah, this one is much sharper. And that's going to be also be corrected, but um, yeah. All these other images I did not use. Uh, I went down to the protests as well to capture some 
some some more cityscapes so to give you guys a big idea how this lens performs and like it's wide and it's it's sharp and it's it's beautiful it's a really really good lens this is the vandalism that's going on downtown portland here the protest uh yeah they really they really did a number downtown so yeah if you guys are curious about that but yeah i wanted to show you that and give you guys my first thoughts on the ivx 11 f4 i think particularly this lens is amazing uh I did notice two things when I met up with a photographer that on a full frame it is much sharper in the corners for sure on APS-C it's sharp but it is also soft so uh, it's what I would say in a crop sensor it is actually excellent sharpness in the corners but you can tell from looking at the full frame and same image yeah, it's much sharper on the full frame, but splendid. I, I, I like the choice they gave us the gelatin filters for the back, but I would have preferred if Iris invested more into the gelatin, not into the gelatin, but into the glass market for the rear back in the uh, filters for the lenses where they can actually uh, take off this mount here. This bracket for the indie filter to put a new one on this uh, I see an, another company has done it so far but they are expensive but with that said guys plenty of coverage with this lens and if you guys like wide angle lenses for astro photography street photography particularly uh, architecture photography cityscapes landscapes night photography long exposures like painting this might come in handy so carry 11 and carry a 15 with you so with this said <clears throat> thank you for watching and thank you for taking the time out to listen to what i have to deliver and the results of my first attempt with the 11 irix f4 lens thank you for irix for sending it out and having it come a day early i really do appreciate that Thank you guys so much, Irish USA and Irish Lenses. Uh, thank you guys so much. But if you guys want to support the channel, you guys can. PayPal donation link down in the description below, guys. If you guys want to support this channel and keep this channel surviving, share. Let people know that Pen and Photographer has pretty much to offer some content. So, uh, yeah. With that said, you guys take care and uh, eat, sleep. Videography, photography, and repeat. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.